Hello all, welcome to Oracle Cloud ERP technical trainings. In this session, we'll try to have an overview of web services which are available in Oracle Cloud and how can we test the sample web service and we using which tools. Let's get into outline. We'll try to understand what are the different types of web services which are available and how do you identify a particular web service as SOAP or a REST? How do you invoke a SOAP REST web services or SOAP or REST web services using different tools which are available? And we are not getting into detail of designing an integration, but we are just trying to understand how do we observe, how do you find out availability of a particular web service and how do we invoke those using some testing tools? Okay, generally we call this particular SOAP UI or Postman or curl as a testing tools for the web services. We are not designing and we are not designing an end-to-end -end integration because to design an end-to-end -end integration you require a, a middleware like a, it can be a Dell Bumi or OIC or it can be MuleSoft, Jitterpate, the lot number of middlewares which are available in the market. So what exactly web services? A web service is a functionality which is available over the internet to communicate between two different heterogeneous network, right? So web service can be technically implemented in any language, but any other language can invoke that particular web service. I mean to say, let us say, assume that you have a web service functionality which is available and you can invoke that particular web service using a PL SQL program or using a C language program, using a Python program, using a Java program, using a Perl program. So using different languages, you can invoke a web service. A web service can be implemented, nothing but like how exactly a web service is designed, right? Maybe if you come from a technical background, so I'm saying that you have a web service. Web service provides a particular functionality, but how technical it is implemented? Web service is a functionality which is implemented using one of the programming languages. It can be a C language, it can be Java language, it can be a .NET language, it can be n number of languages which have, which have the capability to design web services. And vice versa also, we have a different set of languages which are having a capability to invoke a web service also. So in simple example, I can say you like, uh, you can expose a PL SQL program as a web service also. Okay, so, in general, there are two types of web services approach which are available. We call it as SOAP as well as REST. So technically the functionality of a SOAP or REST, it is almost same, but the way it communicates or you know, like the payload and the security, and there are some other things which are different in the SOAP as well as REST. So earlier, like maybe a five years back, SOAP was much, much famous, but so now the current, in current scenario, REST is one of the famous web service approach which we generally use it. Okay, so the major difference between a SOAP and REST is like the payload differences and the capability of the size of the payload differs and security wise more or less both are same. It has both, both have the similar kind of security mechanisms. So to understand SOAP, SOAP stands for simple object access protocol where you require the in to input to be passed to the web service in an XML format. So coming to the rest, representative state transfer, it provides these set of functionalities. So in SOAP web services, you will not have any specific, like uh, when you invoke a web service, right? So you just need to understand which method you want to invoke. But in REST web services, we have to mention which particular, like we have to mention the method name also, like uh, whether you want to invoke in a post, whether you want to invoke the REST web service using the post method or a get method, put method, delete method or patch method. So we have post is for the purpose of, you know, like creating a new data, get is for the purpose of extracting the data and put is to update and patch also similar to update, but it can update only partial data and delete is for the purpose of deleting the data. So what I'm trying to, what like in the session, what we try to understand is like, we'll try to see in real world, let us say if you want to work on integration, the first and foremost important thing, what you try to do is like, um, what is your entity? Nothing but leather, like uh, what is the functionality you want to achieve using a web service? Whether you want to create a supplier, you want to create a journal, you want to create a AP invoice or AR invoice, whether you want to create a project or a contract, right? So now how generally happens in any of the project is first of, first of all, you will try to understand like uh, in front end where exactly it is available, right? You'll just try to understand the navigation so that it will help you for you to, you know, like create some sample one or to validate whether what you have created is correct or not. So in, in our example, it is a very simple example I'm choosing. So I'm trying to create a supplier. So I have navigated to supplier screen and I have a task called create supplier. I just clicked on it and it shows the mandatory fields are only three things here. Supplier name, business relationship, as well as tax organization type. So using UI, nothing but user interface, I'm just creating a supplier like this. And 
always try to understand when you are creating any data always try to validate from the bi i mean from the bi publisher also so it is not required but you know it will help you out you know like a designing end to end solution designing a recon reports reconciliation reports or deco or designing you know like a validation reports if you want to let us say if someone want to understand like uh, you to, you're telling that you created a supplier but how can they validate right so they want to validate how exactly the data was is available in a system so that that is a reason generally we design bi reports for the purpose of reconciliation and using bi you can validate and now we'll try to understand yes like uh, from ui we are able to create a supplier and now using soap ui how can we create a supplier using the soap web service right so this particular functionality is applicable to any kind of web service in oracle cloud erp right so any like whenever you get a requirement in our session we are only discussing about supplier but you can consider this as a generic approach for any kind of entity or it can be a general it can be a contract and project okay so first of all identify your requirement and find out the navigation or the visual details of your web service so like uh, here if you i have provided the link for the supplier and similarly you can get the link for the any other web services and you need to get your cloud er cloud instance url and after that so in the oracle cloud in this particular oracle website they clearly mention like a uh, what is a visual you have to invoke right so generally by default oracle provides a link like this https followed by server name followed by the appropriate the navigation of the visual so we have to replace this server name with your cloud instance url so the final visual url will be like this right so this is how we have to construct the url first before going further now let's get to next slide once you have constructed the url based on your based on the your cloud instance as well as the documentation provided by oracle just open that particular visual url in the browser any browser i prefer chrome okay open the chrome web server uh, chrome browser and if it provides some xml content it means that the visual which you are trying to which you want to invoke i mean the the url of visual is correct we are not actually invoking the visual as of now we are just validating with this url of the visual is correct or not okay visual stands for web service description language now once you have the visual url you can what you can do is you can install this particular software called soap ui it is a free tool and you just mention like click on soap and you mention the project name mention the visual url and just click on okay it will take some time to load the list of methods which are available in the in this visual now it shows the list of methods which are available and i just clicked on supplier su suppliers soap http click on request now it will provide you a large number of information so one more problem with any of the web services you will have a large number of fields which may be not required really in any of the real projects also but oracle provides good amount of uh, fields which may require so what we can do is always make use of the metalink website and find out if oracle is providing any sample payloads so this input what we are passing to the so what we are passing to the web service we call it as payload okay so now we just now saw that you know from the ui to create a supplier we just require only three fields right but oracle has provided a larger number of optional fields it may be required in future scenarios like may based on your complexity of your project so in our case we just require only three fields so what i'm doing is i just i'm just passing only few fields like a, a supplier supplier name tax organization business relationship right and also to invoke a web service right you require you need to mention the authentication as well as the username token also so let me try to open my soap ui yeah so once you click on this particular green icon so the web service will get invoked and you can just click on this click on draw and you can find out whether the status of your web service response is okay or not if it is 200 it means that this web service response is okay nothing but you are able to successfully invoke your web service and you can click on xml and to see the response what it is providing for your xml and also make sure that for your user when you are invoking a web service make sure that you have the proper role to invoke because it is totally role based access in oracle cloud erp so you have to clearly validate whether you have the appropriate role or not to invoke a web service right so this is how we invoke sorry one minute yep yeah this is how we invoke the so web service you can again again you can validate the information using our bi tool okay so that's the reason this is one of the benefit to have a report pre like a design when you are working with the web services or even conversion also now how do we invoke a similar web service using rest right similar i mean to say like how do we invoke a rest web services using the 
tools using different tools we have two tools which are available one is soap ui as well as postman so yeah so this is how you identify what is the url of your rest web service and now here if you observe right so in our class provided the information only like this slash fcm fscm rest api followed by resource or something like this and it, it is like uh, the one the content which is there in the flower braces is nothing but a parameter you need to pass it to invoke this particular rest web services so here final url to invoke rest web, web service if you observe here right what i have done is i have prefixed my oracle cloud url followed by the fcm rest api resources followed by finally i'm just passing the supplier id right so how do i get supplier id so again the bi is the only tool using which you can get the information about your internal fields values right so now so here i i am able to get what is my supplier id nothing but vendor id and once i have the information i can go to again the soap tool click on rest and you know like i you just mentioned the url here if you observe i mentioned the url click on the screen icon and it will get invoked right so this is authentication when you whenever you're working on a soap or a rest make sure that click on authentication tab and it will ask you to mention the username password okay and now here if you observe the response which i'm getting from the soap ui is 4004 not found so i am not sure whether it's a tool issue or a web service issue but it was not working for me in the soap ui what i have done is i used postman postman client this is one of the testing tool for the purpose of rest web services i just mentioned my url and you, again you have an authorization click on authorization mention the username password and click on send it will provide you the response okay so here i was able to invoke it successfully and final one more tool what we have is curl okay so this is one of the one of the what you say a command based utility to invoke a web service right it's similar one so what is the difference here is we have a command followed by username password and followed by the total rest web service url this is generally used for the purpose of it works only for rest web services right so here also we are able to successfully invoke the web service so these are the tools all are free okay and this is one of the very important one oer nothing but oracle enterprise reporter repository which will have the information about ta tables web services fbdis and even the implementation information like uh, which module and how the process works in a particular module so happy learning thank you